In this video, I'm gonna share with you the new features inside of the new Premiere Pro version 25.1 beta. So you can find the first feature by just going up to new project. And it's gonna open this new little project window here. So what we're gonna do is just type in our name of our project like normal, and then select the location that you want to save the file to. And then if you drop down the template here, you can see that there's a list of templates, which is really good for new video editors. And you can see that I have one of my templates in here already. And I'll show you how to create your own here in just a sec. But what we're gonna do for this video is I'm just going to go ahead and select the standard template project. If you wanna skip the import mode that I know a lot of creators don't actually use, you can just check this box here and then click create. And then that's gonna open up your project. And then you can see that the bins are already located over here on the side. Premiere Pro has already created them. And it's also created a 1080p and a 4K sequence for you to have as options. This is really good because like what I normally do is I have a project file that sits inside of my hard drive and I just duplicate that with each new project. I no longer have to worry about doing that anymore. I can just select the template inside of Premiere Pro, which is awesome. If you wanna adjust the sequence settings for either one of these sequences, you can just right click, go down to sequence settings, and then select if you want to increase the aspect ratio or change the frame rate or change any of these specific settings and then press okay. Now to create your own template, all you're gonna do is just create all the bins that you want and then go up here to file and go down here and select save as template. And then I'm just going to name this real quick and then press save. And then the next time you go to create a project, you'll just be able to pull up that template. Now inside of Premiere, there are a lot of new features. So the first one being, if we go up here to the workspace, you now have the new starter tab. And this is a great workspace for anyone that's getting new to Premiere. I remember whenever I was first getting started and looking at Premiere, it was like, really overwhelming and so this is trying to make things very simple very similar to like how easy CapCut is now what's really new is this new properties window over here and i really like this idea a lot i think it's going to get better and better over time and it makes things really simple you have the new fill and fit which are similar to set to frame size and scale to frame size so what you can do if you have clips on your timeline that you want to fill in the entire like they're not filling the entire frame what you can do is just have them fill by just clicking that button there you can also do this with multiple clips by just selecting fill and that's going to fill the frame and you just have to move it around. So you can adjust the position from right here. And so you don't have to worry about going back and forth with effect controls, it's just a lot of stuff that you can do right here. Now you can also do like a letterbox type effect with this. So if you want to select a clip that you want to apply this letterbox effect to, you just, instead of going to the crop effect, you can just go down here, go to the top, change this to 13%, go to the bottom, change this to 13% as well. And now you have a cool little letterbox effect going on for your clip. Now you can also do things with your audio tracks as well inside of the properties window. So I just go ahead and click on it and you can see that you can manually adjust the volume. Let's say that you want to do something like you want to do speech enhance or something like that. All you have to do is just click on these three dots here and you can actually open up the essential sound tab from here. So open for more audio controls. And let's say this wasn't actually what Premiere thought it was. You can clear that audio type and then select, let's say that maybe it's dialogue and then you can go in and do those manual adjustments from there. But one thing that I really like is that I can just play the music and adjust the volume and it's like, it sounds so much better because before you used to have to like go in and drag down this line and then play back, but I can just find that sweet spot a whole lot faster. You can also adjust the speed of a clip from the properties window now by just clicking on the clip that you want to adjust, click on adjust speed down here and then just changing that to whatever you want and press okay. You might have also noticed that Premiere now has a new and more modern looking UI. If you look down here on the timeline, you can see that the edges are more rounded and you can also go up here to Premiere Pro and go down to settings, click on appearance, and you can change the colors inside of Premiere as well. So if you want to change it to dark, you can do that, or you can change it to light and you can also toggle on accessible color contrast. So that's just going to make things a little bit easier to see. For me, I prefer the darkest color thing and then just press OK. Another big change is when you go up to the workspace tab and open up the captions and graphics workspace, you can see that it is a lot different. So let's just go ahead and create some text real quick. And now everything is opened up within the properties tab. Whereas before, if you went over to graphics templates, you would have like an edit button here, but now it's just your templates and Adobe stock. So now all this is done within the properties window which is actually really nice because I can just click on this text and I can put it exactly where I want it to go really quick and easy. And since this is now a part of the properties window, what you can do is go up here to the workspaces and go to your starter workspace and you can make all of your changes right here really quick and easy. Like this is so simple. In the beta, Override Media Color Space is now available for all media formats except for raw formats. 
You can also now enable hardware acceleration for H.264 and H.265 projects, which should make things move a little bit faster. And if you're working with Apple ProRes, you should see an increase in performance as well. I think that these are some pretty solid updates for Premiere, but let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments. And if you wanna learn more about Premiere Pro, check out this video next, and I'll see you in the next one.